Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Nadim for Online Tennis Instruction. In today's video I'm excited to bring you another case study of ours. Um, this time it's with George who came to our second ever OTI VIP VIP experience in Costa Rica. Now with George we also pay, paid a lot of attention to his forehand and he, and he asked us to help him get a little bit more effortless power on his stroke. As you will notice in the next few minutes we worked on three particulars to improve his forehand. Firstly we worked on his preparation phase, then his contact positioning and ultimately the ability for him to extend and follow through with more ease. Let me begin by showing you his before footage first, then I'm going to walk you quickly through the three exercises and show these three exercises that we did with him to you before you can see the final end product of his forehand. I hope you enjoy. So here's George on day one of this year's Costa Rica trip and let's take a look at his forehand in real speed before we go into detail and point out the most important things we worked on. And you will see that his forehand looks at times rather forced and um, due to that fact I wasn't so surprised to see him wear a brace on his elbow um, because of the contact point and all the force that his joint would be under. So let's take a look at the details here. Um, I always like pointing out the good things. So George did have a rather compact take back which is correct and very nice. The problem is that there wasn't really a coil going on between his shoulders against his hips. So everything was pretty much pointing in the same direction here. Coil meaning that the shoulders would be pointed a little bit further away or coiled against the hips. That's what we would want to see, which would make the preparation phase of everything of the stroke a lot easier and more effortless. So we wanted to look at the coil since that was missing. And then the contact phase was very, very important. You can see that here, um, the contact phase looks very, very um, late and forced. And I think this is exactly where that whole arm problem would come into effect. Um, having hit hundreds if not thousands of balls with the elbow so close, the tension likely rising significantly, the left arm not being part of the show here on the side, and then of course a very short follow through, so no lengthening, no continuation into the direction of the target, and that is what we wanted to focus on. So we focused on three things making sure that the preparation phase was in, improved by a better coiling or upper body preparation. The contact phase um, needed to be a lot longer and earlier. So the contact point needed to be a little, for, little bit further out in front or quite a bit further in front actually with the hand and the elbow being in a different position. You can see here the red is the indication of where he currently is. The green is where we would like for him to be so that the contact point itself would move up to the front quite a bit more, okay? And then finally, we wanted him to have a higher and longer finish um, to make this effortlessly occur over and over again. Okay, so now that you have seen George's forehand, you can see how he had trouble with the contact point and ultimately the follow through. So we went into three steps mainly throughout these five days to work on improving that. Now, of course, there are a couple little exercises in addition to the ones that we will show you right now, but the main three exercises that we did to help him improve the forehand and get to where he ended up being was number one, we needed him to get a better coil okay coiling the shoulders against the hips there was very little of that going on which is trouble because then you want to use strength to generate power rather than momentum so we wanted him to work on coiling getting the shoulders to turn significantly further as much as possible against the hips okay that was exercise number one that we tried to have him do over and over again secondly and what I believe was the best improvement that he's made was try to get that contact point a little bit further out in front now we hear a lot of players Players and coaches say, well, you're hitting the ball late. Well, that's great. That is true. But how do you fix it? So a very good exercise um, that, I that I really believe in and um, George also did was we utilize the non-dominant hand as a training aid so to speak, to put the, uh, the wrist of the uh, non-dominant hand underneath the triceps or elbow of the forehand uh, sh uh, uh, hand and then try to get to push out that dominant hand with the help of the non-dominant hand to generate a little bit more space between elbow and torso which will then allow you to stay in the correct swing zone. Okay, So that was exercise number two, utilizing the left hand for his right-handed forehand to generate more space between himself and the contact point and then finally 
finally, the third exercise that we did was have him catch his finish and exaggerate the hold there because everything went across his body really early to begin with. So let's take a look at the exercises in real action and the final product in the end. Let me show you the first exercise that we did here in slow motion on helping George with the forehand. So we had a little bit more of a coil that we wanted to accomplish. You can see that the left arm goes around a little bit more, get more of a coil in comparison to the hips to generate and start momentum going from the slot position towards contact. What you will notice is the take back was still the same, compact on the right hand side, and now the dynamic turn at the beginning, that coil, will allow him to be a lot more dynamic stepping up to contact right here. And you will see that the swing path is significantly improved from low to high, no longer jammed as much. And you can see that because the elbow is now way further out in front, and so is the contact point, which would then allow him to lift a lot more than before and have a lot more freedom in his swing. So the coiling part itself already fixed a lot for George as you can see here. If you compare this forehand to the forehand at the very beginning it's night and day. This here was on day three and only on the coil. I want you to also see one more exercise following here in a second where we used the left arm as an assistant to help the right arm get this position more and more often. And then finally show you how we finished. Here's exercise number two that helped uh, George improve his forehand and that is the use of the left arm underneath the hitting arm elbow. What this was supposed to accomplish was create space between the upper body and the arm and the hitting arm which would be a very important tool for George to get the contact point to be way further out in front than you saw at the very beginning of this video. So now we work on the coil and now the left arm underneath the elbow of the right arm is what allowed um, George to get that contact point way further out in front and maintain that gap between upper body and elbow which was created right at the beginning here before he even hits the ball. And consequently, more often than not, he was able to create a contact point that was healthy, meaning it was out in front of his body, even if the tension would creep up every now and then, because of course this is a progressive system, so things take time until they make it foothold in your system, okay? So here we saw him do this with the arm, that arm creating the gap between your el his elbow and the torso was crucial. Contact point clearly in front, and then because of that contact point, now he's truly able to lift a lot longer out in front towards his target before disappearing, quote unquote, on the left side of his body as the release of the swing and not immediately go to the left side due to having no room to do so. So that exercise coupled with the coiling exercise that we had him do was very important to get a more effortless forehand. Let's take a look at the last clip on George's forehand and show you how much it was improved in comparison to day one. Okay, so here we have George again on the final day of our clinic in Costa Rica. And you will see here on his forehand how much improved it already was. Now we worked on the three things, the coiling, the contact point, and then ultimately the finish, the continuation. So here, first and foremost, you can see that there's a gap between the elbow and the torso. And also you can see that the left hand is coming around as part of the coil. And now at contact, you will see that his contact point is a lot further out in front and the elbow is still away from the body, which was very important. And now he was able to lift on out. And you can see that the finish right here, as the final piece of the exercises, we asked him to hold the finish, which you can clearly see he's doing right here. And we have apples to apples to compare. If you see the ball going nice and deep and him being fed balls from the other side of the fence. Let's take a look at the next one in slow motion one more time. And the gap is maintained. And you can see at contact one more time right here, gap is maintained, contact point is out in front, and then the finish is nice and high one more time. And the, the goal here was, ladies and gentlemen, to understand that this is a process. It took five days to get to this point, and of course George is continuing back home to do, the, do this over and over again. Now this was a difficult ball and you can still see, although it was a difficult ball, the gap here prior to contact is still available and at contact as well. Now, yes, there was a little bit more proximity of an issue here, but still, even though it is not the ideal forehand, he still wanted to make sure that he finishes and goes high. So the good thing is that although some of the shots weren't perfect, 
he tried to go through every single one of these steps, making sure he coils early, making sure he maintains the space between his elbow and his upper body, and then finally having a high finish. Let's look at this one more time, a deep ball, making sure, let's see if there's a space, and you can see that the space is still there, although, of course, there's still some tension that, we, that would creep in, especially with higher and more difficult shots, and this finish here wasn't quite as high as you can see. Let's take a look at one more here, and you will see that throughout this time, there will be some goods and there won't be some as good, okay? But now the very next shot, you will see again, since he was working on the same thing over and over again, that elbow was great. Let me go back a little bit more so you can see the space at the very beginning of the swing. You can see the space right here, which he didn't have before. A solid coil with both arms being around. Very, very nice job in a good slot position on a compact swing, which you always had. And then a contact point that is significantly out in front. You can see that space. And now the ability to lift up and out and holding that high finish, something that was not part of George's game at the beginning of the week. So as we work through these step-by-step -step progressions, you can see that the forehands definitely improved. And within five days, it is definitely something that any tennis player who puts their mind to can achieve. So here you have it. George did a great job working through these steps and it was not easy for him obviously also because you know over five days we work on more than just one stroke which is a given right but it was very good to have him work through these steps and when it wasn't his turn he would do the shadow swings he would use the fence to work on uh, these mechanics he would self feed we would work him through every single progression until the end he was able to receive the ball the same way he did at the beginning of the uh, uh, session on Monday on Friday he was able to hit a much better much cleaner forehand over and over and that is the goal and there's absolutely no reason you can't do the same so if you enjoyed this video Please do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with our latest content. And until next time, I'm Nadim for Online Tennis Instruction. Take care.